Jason Veritek here on MLB Now. Obviously a terrific catcher for many years and now part of that Boston Red Sox coaching staff. You're now the game planning coordinator, Jason. The first question I'm sure everyone's asking, what does that mean? What are you doing exactly? I think, you know, position, it doesn't change a whole lot for some of the stuff that, you know, been doing with incorporating with the pitchers and the catchers, and especially on the, on the catching end. But it just doesn't stop there, and it, 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 it filters over to uh, learning more and being a part of defensive positioning meetings, setting things up, and uh, helping, helping move forward. And my understanding is that a lot of this, in fact, is based on analytics, and particularly, like you said, dealing with pitchers and catchers. You know, what is it about analytics that you have been particularly helpful, beneficial to you when you're trying to convey messages to help the players in your team? I think people work that hard and, and put that much time in, and they develop these things. It's information that we can use, and sometimes filtering through it before you get it to a player or getting it to a player so they can best use it for them. And, you know, it's hugely part of, of our game and things that we need to adapt to. Yeah, I think that's the biggest part, like you said, is just disseminating that information. It's one thing to say, hey, listen, here's a spreadsheet of numbers, but to tell a guy in the moment, here's where it's helpful, here's what you can do, have a catcher coax him through that, that's obviously going to be very key. Which brings me to my next point, which is when I'm looking at the average start duration, in 2020, the average start, Jason, was four and two-thirds innings. Now, you know, just as I do, back when we were growing up, when someone would say five and dive, that was the way you denigrate a starting pitcher. You make fun of him. Here's a five and dive guy, right? Now, the average starting pitcher throws less than five innings. What does that mean? to you when you hear that well it puts a ton a ton of pressure on the length and and the depth of your bullpen and you know the more you can get out of those starters the better but our game has changed and and uh triggers are a little shorter and guys durations aren't quite as long but still the teams that do the best is the the longer duration those guys can be in there Specifically to the Boston Red Sox pitching staff, listen, we know you guys did not pitch well in 2020. A variety of reasons for that. Eduardo Rodriguez, you know, his health and COVID and Chris Sale being out, etc. When you look at this Red Sox pitching staff, what gives you the most confidence and the optimism that this team can go back to getting outs on a consistent basis with Nathan Eovaldi and others? Oh, first and foremost is health. You lose a, a number one like Eddie. You lose a number one like Sale. Uh, Evo, when he's healthy, is amongst the best in all the game. Health has to be first and foremost. If those guys can be health, healthy, then you have a chance for some of the younger components to really contribute. You're working now again with Alex Corey. He's back in the fold as a Red Sox manager. Alex is a guy who's beloved in the game, particularly those in Boston, whether it's ownership or the players themselves, anybody who's worked with. I worked in the ESPN and broadcasting. Everyone loved working with Alex. What is it about him you think that makes him such a successful manager? Well, he's, he's got high energy and he's extremely intelligent. He knows how to connect to, to the young player, whether he's English, whether he's English speaking or Spanish speaking. He connects to uh, everybody at, at all levels. And he's, you know, as savvy as they come as far as knowing the game. And you do that and you add that with his communication to, you know, both above and below that. It's a huge quality to have. He's a great leader. Yeah, and leadership is where I wanted to end up with you because when I think of your career, in so many ways, you'd hear players say, look, we're looking to tech for leadership. We're looking to tech to lead us in this moment. You know, being a leader on those Boston Red Sox teams, where did that stem from? Were you a natural-born leader? Did you read books on leadership? Like, where did that come from that you felt like you could be an assertive guy in that clubhouse? I wasn't always uh, the most vocal. Um, I think it comes with position. It comes with time. It comes from experience from you know, what past teammates have taught me and things you mess up on. Sometimes maybe one group you're, you're too hard on, maybe another group uh, you're too light on, but your, your teammates, your peers really uh, nurture and teach you how to be a leader. And you know, those components, you know, they're different as a player and they're different as a staff member. And what you could do as a player, you also have to perform is different in a leadership role when it comes to coaching. Yeah, it's always some guys you can pat them on the back, some guys you can get in their face. It's all about knowing those personalities and, and going from there. Jason Veritek, the game planning coordinator for the Boston Red Sox. Thanks so much for the time, man. Stay safe. All the best to the family, and hopefully we'll see you soon. Thank you. Great holidays.